I started as a genetic counselor, it's been close to 20 years at this point. Um, I worked in a, in a rural hospital in Texas and, um, my prenatals, um, genetic counseling sessions. And most of the time I was, um, meeting with women who had had high risk maternal serum screening results. This is before NIPT, um, was even a thing. Um, and those maternal serum screening, um, tests are still available today, but work based on looking on hormone levels. Um, and the majority of the women in my office, again, had abnormal results, high risk results. Um, and so I was there counseling with them. Um, you know, at that time, the positive predictive value or the chance that somebody actually had a child with Down syndrome for someone who had a high risk maternal serum screening result, um, it's about 3% is the, is the chance that that's a, a, what you would call a true child that has Down syndrome in that case. Um, and so the majority of the women that I met with counseled them, talked about the diagnostic testing. They'd have to go on um, and have diagnostic testing if they wanted to know for sure whether the baby had Down syndrome or not. Compared to today with NIPT, so NIPT for Down syndrome has close to a 95% positive predicted value. Um, so that means when someone receives a high risk result from an NIPT, there's an, about a 95% chance that the baby will be found to have Down syndrome, about 5% of the time it doesn't. So you still need to have that diagnostic testing. But as you can see in the difference in the numbers, far fewer women are being offered diagnostic testing because NIPT is now available to them as a screening tool. Um, we're not dealing with as many women having maternal serum screening, right? We're, so many women were being offered amio, far fewer are having to go that option these days because NIPT has an improved PPV or a positive predictive value over maternal serum screening. Natera and companies like Natera are interested in improving um, the technology behind an IPT. So I think you're going to see improvements overall in the types of disorders that are included on it, the PPV values, those positive predictive values, like how good the tests are and, and actually kind of um, showing whether a baby may or may not have one of those conditions. Um, I think you're going to see a move towards more what we call single gene conditions. So I mentioned that NIPT now is, is primarily for chromosomal conditions like trisomy 21 and micro deletions like 22Q11.2. Um, but you're going to see, I think, more NIPTs are going to become available for single gene disorders um, that happen kind of brand new in babies that are not necessarily inherited from mom and dad, something like um, achondroplasia, which is a condition that causes short stature. Um, those things can happen sporadically um, in, in babies that are not inherited from mom or dad. And so there's new technologies that are, that are becoming more available that allow parents to consider that type of screening test.